here we are on this journey of 52 weeks of why episode number five um have a very special guest longtime personal friend this week who i'm i'm curious to hear his why uh because i've known him for such a long time i think i kind of know what it is um rick lobdell is my guest and rick is a a master concrete artist um a master artist in general uh, his art is amazing He's from my hometown where I live now in Salem, Ohio, a uh, husband, a father, and, and an artist, as I said, and an entrepreneur. Um, very cool to watch his journey as he travels from art to business to entrepreneur to art um, and tries to find this balance between doing what he loves and actually earning a living doing it, um, which is kind of neat to see. Rick, thanks so much for being here. I appreciate you taking the time. Absolutely. Uh, thank you for having me. And um, I've been thinking about this and, you know, I'm an artist. It's been such a long journey for me as an artist. But, you know, you start out and, you you know, when I went to college, I went to college for computer science. I didn't go to for, for art. I didn't think I was going to be an artist. That wasn't, you know, there's no money in making art. There's no way you can make a living as an artist. That's what everybody tells you. And I wasn't happy. And I was having a great time in art and I just kept taking classes and just kept going and kept going and went to grad school and kept going and learned and learned. And, and it becomes one of those things that you never stop learning first and foremost. And, and that, that becomes an exciting thing. But from that point on, you know, any kind of artist wants to be known. They want to be, that's the whole point of being an artist. It's not just to make your own personal artwork and hide it in the corner and never show a soul. It's to get out there, to be exposed, to, to let people into, you know, what goes on in your world. And that became a huge passion for me. But then the next point is, how do you make money as an artist? And so I started to really push the envelope on every different aspect of what it takes to be an artist. And out of nowhere, I found this whole entire industry that knows nothing about art in the concrete world. And all of a sudden, you know, when you say that, it's like, oh, that means you pour concrete. I've never poured an ounce of concrete in my life. It is going into it. The canvas is already made for you big floor is already there for you and you throw down whatever you want, whatever that client wants, whatever design you want. And all of a sudden it became this whole world that I just, you just don't expect, but I'm an artist and I get to be creative and I get to have fun with it and I get to make money doing it. And that's what everybody told me I wasn't going to get to do. Now it may not be the perfect painting that I love to do. It may not be my personal artwork, but it is because I've made something for myself. I'm worldwide now. I've no, I've known all of travel the country doing demos and training classes i'm going to world of concrete in a couple of weeks to show off in front of 75,000 people all of this because i went to art school and i found yeah, your comments. audio there your audio is back again sorry i lost your audio there for a second but it's back that's fine. um repeat the last part of it going to world of concrete so going to world of concrete and, and uh i'm showing off in front of 75,000 people and and that's something that not too many artists really get to do and so to be able to take this, this education and make money doing it, it's not that easy to do. And it doesn't happen very much anymore. We're in a day and an age when galleries don't even, they're not even worth it anymore. The, the industry for an artist has changed so much that it, with this digital age and this internet, that it makes it almost impossible to become known at all as an artist anymore or to make money and be financially sound from being an artist. And so to find this industry and to find, and not just find an industry just to make money, but to actually enjoy it, to love to get my hands dirty and to find, I, I can't, it's not work to me. I love what I do. I love going to work every single day. I don't care if it's a basic pattern. I love seeing the reaction from every single client. I look forward to it. I look forward to the challenges, the headaches, the difficult clients. It doesn't matter to me. It's fun. It's a challenge every single day and it doesn't get old. So um, I want to make sure I'm summarizing this correctly, that um, your why is it, it's art to an extent, but I, I feel like it's also, um, I, I, I'm looking for a way to say there's something to prove, right? You, you, you want to also demonstrate that um, it is possible to, to do what you were told that you couldn't, to overcome uh, what you were told to take that a step further uh it's also to there's a whole industry now that that is 
interested in what I'm doing and trying to learn from me and trying to find ways to be creative now because of this. I've, I've, I've found an industry that knows nothing about art at all, not even the slightest little bit. Basic math is such a simple task, but it isn't to them. And I love the fact that all these people are, are taking this and absorbing it and, and it's making it even more exciting for me because of it. Yeah, you're making um, making changes in the concrete world, right? As opposed yeah, to it just time. being um, a road as what most of us are accustomed to seeing it. I mean, I've seen some of the work that you've done and that has changed it into being legitimately something more than concrete. So um, when you when you wake up every single day and you're, you're, you're getting the gears moving and you're rolling through, tell me how that, that desire to, to push art and that drive to succeed motivates you. Give me, give me how the why gets you going every morning. Uh, I think a lot of it has to do with um, the, it's to me, a lot of it is this kind of like the square footage thing too. You know, when I sit in my studio and I paint a little tiny painting, it takes me months to paint a, a two foot, a four foot painting. But I can go to a concrete slab that's a couple thousand square feet and I can throw down in six days, in five days, you know. So you get this immediate return on, on what you're doing in this fulfillment quick. Uh, and, you know, there's no struggle to it. The struggles are within an hour, not within days. You know, like I'm sitting here right now with my painting in the background. I haven't touched it in months and I'm analyzing the next colors that I want to go to do and it's driving me insane. And, and, it, and it's really, that's a struggle, you know, to go to, go to my concrete slab today because currently I'm doing a garage floor and I'm trying to make it look like it's a naval air carrier and there's going to be a jet flying into it for a landing. And, you know, that's insane. But I'm going to do it in a couple of days. It's no big deal. I'm going to have a quick turnaround and then I'm going to feel fantastic about it. And so that's how easy it is when I get up in the morning to go, I know what I'm doing. This is what I got to remember to put together. Got to go to the shop, get these supplies. And it's just, I just roll from there pretty quickly. Yeah. Now, nice. Okay. So this goes right into the, my next question that I ask everyone is how do you know now at the end of the day that your why has been fulfilled? That's a tough one. Um, hmm. Because I don't think, I think you're you're driven by the client satisfaction. I don't think you're driven. I mean, obviously that's, there's a component of that there, but I don't think that's your why, right? The why isn't isn't people pleasing uh, as much as it is the art and and overcoming those obstacles. Um, because my mind immediately goes to, oh, I did a good job for these people, but I think there's more to it than that, and that's why it's a good question to ask. You. It's a tough one for that same reason. I mean, I, you're right. It's not, it's not just the client that, that really does help to see their eyes, to see them staring at it, to, to see their reactions, you know, to, to get that hug from a client that you don't expect because I'm not a, a hugging kind of person, you know, always gets me. But when it's all said and done, it's really just kind of, I don't really, it's a tough one for me because it's, it's almost like when I go to bed, I'm still thinking about what I got to do tomorrow more than what I did today. I'm always looking forward to the next day. I'm always planning the next thing. I don't want to stop. You know, I'm one of those kind of people that I hate taking lunch breaks. Heck, I hate stopping to go to the bathroom. I just want to go, 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 go. And I don't want to stop. It's really a struggle for me to actually go to bed at night because I can't stop thinking, planning, organizing, enjoying. Let's go to the next level of that question then. If it's not on a day-to-day um, -day basis. So if it's every day is a preparation for uh, continuing to rock it the next day. And so maybe that level of satisfaction isn't achieved at the end of a day. How will you know at the end of those, at the end of days of your particular days that you successfully fulfilled your why? Oh, that's, that's a lot easier. I, I mean, I think it's the credibility that I've achieved. I, I, I don't, there's not too many people out there that are as, that have done what I've done. And I don't really have to even think about that anymore because I've, I mean, I've won, I won 14 national awards. No, I'm sorry. 16 national awards over five years doing stuff that no one's ever seen before. So, I mean, I've already accomplished all that. I'm at a point now where it's almost like I'm just enjoying the ride and sitting back and, and I've done everything I needed to do. And I'm just kind of seeing what I, how far I can take this is really what it is anymore for me. And, and that's, that's a big thing. Um, that's why I'm also excited, like I said, about this world of concrete coming up this year, because I'm, I'm 
taken the envelope farther. I'm going to show people things they've never seen before. And that's hard to do even for yourself. I'm pushing my own envelope. That's another thing that's driving me. And that's hard to do too, because I've done everything to me. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm a sort of a, a follower of, of your art and, and, and I have a piece of your art on my building. Um, I, I think that you're right, that there's a legacy piece um, that, that is a part of what you're doing that will live well beyond um, you living, right? And the impact that you're having on a whole industry, I think, is the same way, right? The industry will not be the same as a result of you um, being in it and making the change to their mentality that it can be art um, and that it is possible for them to make it something beautiful uh, or artistic or or their own or personal. Um, man, I, I knew your why was going to be interesting. I knew that it would be uh, very close to what I thought, right? I knew it would be art oriented. Um, I didn't, it didn't occur to me the obstacles that you had to overcome to be where you are and do what you do. Um, in the sense of it being a business and an entrepreneur, it all seems, as with most people, it all seems very natural now that you're in it. Um, and to think that the naysayers are, are part of what motivated you and continue to motivate you to prove to them that um, not only did I break through that ceiling you told me I couldn't break through, but now I'm, I'm on a completely different playing field, right? Now I'm, I'm on a level that you couldn't even imagine, both, both income and with what you're doing with the art. Um, any final thoughts? Yeah, I mean, to that same point, to, the, to all the naysayers and everything, I can't tell you how many times people always said, well, artists can't make any money. And, you know, you can't, you can't make a living as an artist. And it drove me insane. I was like, that, that doesn't make any sense. But the bottom line is, it's, it's also about business. You got to know business. You, it, they are correct. An artist in their own right, doing their own personal artwork, cannot make a living just doing their art. They got to know what to do with it, how to get that out to the masses, how to get that into the industry, whatever industry it is, whatever creativity you're going to do, whether it's music, it doesn't matter what art it is. It could be poetry for all it matters. Get into slam poetry, you know, make the, make your way into the industry that you want to be a part of. And that's the hardest part about it. And that's business too. And that's the biggest misconception that people have about artists. There is a business to what they do. If they don't know it, that's their fault, but they need to learn it because you're not going to be successful and you're not going to be happy if you don't find a way to be successful as an artist through business. Man, thank you for, for taking the time. Tell me, um, I haven't done this with anyone else, but you're on a different platform than most of the people I have had on the uh, podcast. Uh, how can people find you and see your art uh, if they want to after we're finished up? They can go to www.concretemystique.com. That's M-Y-S-T-I-Q-U-E.com. And see all Got my it. artwork. I'll, you can follow me on Facebook, uh, Rick Lobdell. Um, I'm all over the place. Got it. I'll make sure that I share some of that because, like I said, the from an art perspective, um, understanding that, that what you do is go to people's homes and you travel and the art is brought to them on top of the art that they're accustomed to seeing hanging on their wall, that their their driveway floor or their driveway or their back patio can be beautiful. Um, I think it's cool even just to plant the seed with people that that's possible and it doesn't just have to be a slab. Um, man, I appreciate you. I appreciate your friendship. I appreciate the the things that you've helped me accomplish as a friend and the, the mural that you gave me on my building. Uh, and I'm wishing you all the best in 2020. Can't wait to see what happens.